This is Karen with Boston on the Birds. Are you concerned about all the brouhaha about the NAR, National Association of Realtors, um, lawsuit and all the craziness and everyone's saying different things and the press and the media have it wrong? Just want to let you know you've probably seen a ton of these videos. I am going to explain why I am worth my weight in gold, which is kind of heavy, as a buyer's agent. The things I do for you, it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. And if you go in and you're a first-time buyer and you, you don't know what to look for, you could get screwed in a big way. So let me move forward and tell you why it's great to have a good buyer's agent. Not every agent is going to do what I do. Be right back. Okay, so you're a first time buyer. So you don't know what you don't know. Ideally, you go out before you talk to anyone and start poking around, looking at property you think you like. So you'll look at condos, you'll look at houses, and you'll decide whether you want either or. Do you want a house or do you want a condo? You can't really get in the game saying, I don't know if I want either one, so let's look at it all with an agent. Not a good use of your time and their time. Go out and look around and probably within two or three um, Saturday or Sundays going to open houses, you're going to figure out you do want a small yard. You do want a single family. You do want three bedrooms, not just two. You don't want to pay a condo fee. Uh, just so you know, if you're a first-time buyer and you plan on staying there for at least three to five years, uh, more value is in a single-family house because people tend to buy them and stay there longer, have a family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You figure out all these things, what you can live with, what you can't, and then you contact a real estate agent. That's number one. Number two, what I do, talk about your finances, what you've been pre-approved for. Oh, you haven't been pre-approved. Okay, so you may have a referral from someone. I also can share a referral. I basically trust in this one uh, loan officer. She's been awesome for the last five years. We have worked together. I can pick up the phone and call anytime she answers. Uh, she'll call and inform me of any glitches. We have a relationship, which means you'll have a relationship with her and we become a team. So nothing gets slipped up, nothing gets for, forgotten. What if you're so excited you decide to go out and buy a nice sofa for your new house as soon as you get into contract? Don't do it. We warn you, don't buy anything. I know it would be great. You know the house you'd like to go and start buying furniture. Everything affects your credit. You want nothing. You don't even want to go clothes shopping. Keep that credit card flatlined for the entire time you're looking for a house so that your credit will look great six weeks before you shop and six weeks after you get into contract, so everything goes smoothly. Number three, you have been approved for 700,000. Great, you do not shop for homes at 700. You start looking at six, maybe six and a quarter. Why? Well, depending on your down payment, what's going on now, depending on where you're looking, we're talking the Boston area, certain pockets, Every time a house comes on the market at, say, 600, 625, 629, it's selling for 690, 725, 700. I've seen overbidding 70,000, 100,000. We discuss the strategy, and there's a lot of strategy and appraisal gaps and things I like to discuss with my buyer so they know what they're getting into. You can't know this if you don't have a buyer's agent. Number five, 
decisions about contingencies, inspections, radon. What's radon? I have a whole video about radon on my YouTube channel. Other contingencies, pest reports, all these things, depending on the house, are something you want to discuss with your agent and decide whether you want them, if you do want them, whether you want it to be contingent or not. That's another thing you want to discuss to keep your offer strong. As a buyer's agent, I walk through houses with you. When you've decided, you know, you've had it narrowed down and say we go look at three houses over the weekend that pretty much match what you want. I walk through, including the attic and the basement with you. And I look at things. I've been on hundreds of inspections that last two, three, four hours. I know what to look for. So just to give you some background, if I see something, I will call you over discreetly so no one else knows what we're talking about. And I will show you what might come up in an inspection report. You're psychologically prepared for, you know, there might be a little plumbing issue here or there might be a foundation issue. Um, I just kind of red flag things. Or if I don't see anything, it's like, I don't see anything, but that doesn't mean an inspector won't find anything. I'm your right hand when we're going through homes together and even drainage outside the home. That's why it's kind of good to look in the rain. When I see a home on the market that is not selling and I look at it, I can often tell you why. Floor plans. In the kitchen, which is small, the stove is butt up against some cabinets so that you cannot open one drawer. What does that mean? That is not efficient, not efficient at all. Who wants to buy a, a house where you're gonna have to rip everything out and redo it? Maybe you want to, but something's up there. All these little things add up and floor plans are important. Is there a nice flow to the house? Does it feel odd when you're in there? Don't feel I'm shaking. Don't feel pressured to buy a house because it matches except the vibe isn't good. It's usually because the floor plan's off. It doesn't flow. How about the toilet is placed so that when you're getting out of the shower, you could practically fall into the toilet. It's too cramped or it's placed in the wrong area. Little weird things like this make a difference in picking a house, especially if you think I'll be here for five years and then I'm gonna try and get something bigger. You don't wanna buy something that's hard to resell. Now, being an artist, oh, did I mention that? I'm an artist, I paint, I have for most of my life, which also gives me a leg up when I walk into a space, the harmony of the design and I can pick up on things that aren't quite balanced in a, in a property and even the actual land too. But most people can feel that. Um, but I pay a lot of attention to it because I also have a little feng shui in my background. So I pay attention to certain things. And my clients benefit from that. The actual uh, use of a buyer's agent, if you pick a good one, you can really pull a lot of information out of them and be open to their suggestions and their comments because you'll be a much better educated buyer. And we're not even talking about the process of due dates and did you know if you miss a due date, you can be totally out of contract? Say you make an offer on something and you're in contract and it's been a few weeks and you're three weeks from closing, you're getting ready to sign the purchase and sale. Someone could come to your seller and offer more money, but they're in contract, so they can't really get out of it. How about that without being sued? So how about this? You're late with your purchase and sale. If you're late with an important due date, they can say, you're out of contract, see you later, here's your money back, and go with someone else. Unbelievable, but that's not good faith, but crazier things have happened. So you want to be on target for everything and your agent keeps you on target.
Like for instance, I give my clients a calendar, all the due dates, um, copies of things that they're going to have to sign so that they can be familiar with what's coming up next and what's expected of them at the closing table. There's so many things. If you think you can do it on your own, great. And I've watched on Facebook and all kinds of websites saying, you know, you're crazy to pay an agent because you can do it yourself. It's not rocket science. Well, if you're buying a dump and you're going to tear it apart and redo the whole thing, that's one thing. But if you're going to buy a house you're going to live in, you want to be very careful. It's the biggest investment of your life. And a good buyer's agent is worth their weight and good, like I told you. Closing. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe and have a great day. Hi there. First of all, I want to thank you for watching my videos. I have over 200 videos educating buyers and sellers in the Boston area, what the market's like, what the neighborhoods are like, and what towns are like to familiarize yourself, especially if you're from out of town, out of state. And then little tidbits for buyers and sellers, just things to watch out for. So thank you, and I'd love it if you'd subscribe.